the garden. Today I'm going to be experimenting growing moss from spores. Now in these little pods are probably thousands of tiny little seed-like spores. So they just look like dust or smoke. They're incredibly small. This will be the first in a series of experiments to see if we can grow moss from spores on the ground, in containers, and in terrariums. We're going to be starting a brand new terrarium just for this moss experiment. This was an old whiskey bottle. It had some really tasty Jim Beam. But we're going to start off with some charcoal and some pebbles to make a false bottom. This will create a little gap in between any standing water at the base and the soil so that it doesn't get oversaturated. I don't want to get anything that's still kind of brown like this. That means the wood isn't fully burned. So finished charcoal should be nice and light. It should be pitch black. We want to break this up into pieces about the size of our pebbles just so they fit in the jar. Now we're gonna rinse this until the water is fairly clear. This will wash away any ash, which can actually change the pH. And it'll make sure that any standing water down at the bottom isn't black and soupy. I've also rinsed the pebbles too, but that's less important. It's just gonna keep that water nice and clear by making several terrariums, I've discovered you really only need a tiny little layer down at the bottom. So we're gonna shoot for about one or two centimeters, starting with our rinsed charcoal. I've made sure to save enough charcoal to mix in with our potting soil. So we've got a good amount there. I'm just gonna kinda spread it out a little bit, and then we can add our rocks. We could mix this up, incorporating the charcoal in with the stones, but I kind of like it as a base. It provides a nice visual anchor with that beautiful dark color, but it's also right at the bottom where any standing water will be. So that's where it's going to be most useful to us. This is going to be a native terrarium, using mosses that we've collected right here in the backyard. We could probably use native soil, but I want our soil to be nice and clean so that if any moss sprouts, I know it was from our spores. So I'm gonna be using just my normal potting soil from indoors. That way I know it's nice and sterile. And so we don't make too much of a mess, I'm gonna take a little piece of paper and make a funnel. So I'll just fold it over like this with a little hole at the base, and then we'll start adding our soil. And periodically, I'm going to mix in some of our charcoal as well. And we're only going to add about two inches of soil. Because we really don't have any plants in here, they're not going to need a lot of soil for those roots. Moss actually don't have typical roots like normal plants. Instead of roots, they have rhizoids, which are hair-like structures. Roots act like a straw transporting water from the inside, whereas rhizoids act like a wick, drawing the moisture up. You can actually get a really good look at them in my first ever terrarium. They just cling to the side of the glass, so you get an idea of the structure of the plant. And before we add our spores, I want to pre-moisten this soil. You can also clean up the glass a little bit if you can. Now for the fun part, we get to add our moss spores. So I've collected most of these with the scissors, just to get those spore pods at the top. I'm just gonna grab a couple more here. I wanna make sure I have enough for multiple different experiments. I wanna do some of these in terrariums, some of them on terracotta pots. I wanna try just smearing some on some soil and see if we can get them to come up that way. So I don't want to just pull the spore pods out because we'll actually pull out a lot of the plants with it. You can see we can uproot or up 
rhizoid, <laughs> some of those moss plants. And even though they look thick, this is really what each individual plant looks like. They're really small and there's really not much to them. Different varieties of moss can have different looking spore pods. These ones kind of look like little figs. I do want to be careful not to introduce too much moss. That can get rehydrated and might give us a false positive. So I want to try and stick to just the spore heads. And we can actually break these apart and kind of sprinkle them like dust. They just look like dust. They are absolutely minuscule. So there's probably a million on my finger right now. And while we're adding these, I want to try and break them up a little bit just so that they spread out a little more evenly. So this is all an experiment. I've never actually gotten moss to grow from spores before. Now so all of them don't end up right in the middle, I'm going to kind of angle the jar, see if I can drop them in to get them in the corners. That should give us some pretty decent coverage. So this will probably look a little bit silly for the first month or so until the moss shows up, but then eventually we might be able to add some new plants. So I think this is going to be fascinating to watch grow. I'm curious to see if we get anything other than moss to grow, or if we get any creatures. So I'll make sure to keep a close eye on this. You always want to make sure you're perfectly happy with your terrarium before you seal it up. Worst case scenario, we could always dump all of this out and start from scratch. But because this is just an experiment on growing moss spores, I think this is perfect. So we'll add our lid and seal in that moisture. And because it's sealed, we can actually keep this outdoors because we want to give it plenty of light. So I'm going to keep this outside in the shade. You don't want this in the sun or it'll turn into a solar oven. Moss needs a surprising amount of light when grown indoors. So pick a really bright window. And this is just the first of several experiments on growing moss from spores. So I hope you stay tuned. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>